Because this man is on the Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. I was very lucky to be his teammate. And tonight, he and Eli will have their second edition of the Manning cast. One of the guests, Will Ferrell. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, Peyton Manning. Yeah, Peyton. You say, boys, thanks for having me. Hey, thank you for joining us. I like that you're strapped in on the side of the road. Safety first. Uh, let's yes. talk. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Hero, thank you. Let's talk about tonight. Massive game. Seahawks, Giants, Jamal Adams coming back. What has your research told you that we're in for tonight? Is this going to be explosive, low scoring? What are we thinking at MetLife tonight, Peyton? I think Jamal Adams is the key, Pat. Uh, what does Seattle do with him? Is he going to cover Darren Waller man to man? Are they going to blitz him? That's something Eli and I are looking for. Uh, Giants uh, have had these slow starts. Uh, for some reason, when they kind of go no huddle, they start scoring more points. So maybe they come out with a little no huddle to get a little tempo going, right? Don't wait to get down 14 nothing before you start moving the ball. But I'm telling you, Geno is playing well. He's in control. They're running the ball well. They have good play action. Uh, the Giants blitz every single play, yet they have two sacks and no interceptions. If you're going to blitz, right, A.J., that's kind of the point, either to get some sacks and to get some turnovers. If you're not going to get one of those, I'm not sure why you're blitzing every play. So I think it'll be a close game. I really do. Okay, go ahead, A.J. Peyton, you, you mentioned uh, the Giants offense kind of being more productive when they have some tempo and it's a two-minute type situation. That's like the old cliche question to casual fans watching the game. Guys that move the ball all, 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 you know, two, three quarters, they go to two minute and bam, here comes everything. They put some points up. What is it? And is it something that you could actually do the whole game? Well, look, the Giants do a lot of uh, kind of complex run plays, right? Where they have, you know, multiple tight ends in there. And so those are hard plays to kind of get to in no huddle, right? Those are plays you kind of need to huddle up, to call the verbiage, to be sure you got the motion and get the big guys in there. But um, I think it's a good change of pace. I'm not saying you got to do it exclusively. That's kind of what we did, right? But have it in the package and, like like I said, don't wait to get down, right? That's basically why we went exclusively no huddle, AJ. We were playing the Jets uh, one game, and uh, the week before we were down 21 nothing, and we started going no huddle, and we said, hey, Let's just start the game that way. And we started it, and we never turned back. And I'm not saying that's the right move for the Giants, but I'm saying when you're not getting off to a fast start, when you're struggling early, it's a good way to get everybody going, get Daniel in some rhythm. So maybe we'll see that tonight. Hey, whenever you call these man and cast, you get a chance. I, it feels like you and Eli, whenever you say some of the things during the show, that you actually get to talk to, like, offense coordinator, head coach, and everything as a member of the media. What is the conversations like? And are you telling them, like, is Eli obviously remember? Hey, maybe we help Daniel. Or how do those conversations go with you guys, as opposed to maybe other media folks? You think? Well, look, it's all on the up and up. I mean, we're certainly not going to, you know, disclose anything. Uh, you know, Eli, I think Daniel Jones and Coach Dable probably will tell Eli a few things that maybe they wouldn't tell everybody else, right? I mean, I think he's an employee of the Giants. He has some kind of show. I don't know if anybody watches it or not, Pat, but you know, he's a Giants ambassador, right? Uh, I talked to Gino and Shane Waldron, uh, their offensive coordinator. Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope Gino can talk to me a little bit, kind of quarterback to quarterback. I know Shane yesterday, you know, kind of – talked a little bit to me as if I was still a current quarterback, which I'm not, but he's he's speaking the language to me. So it's nice to get that insight and kind of go behind the ropes. But our rule, Pat, is 10 minutes. I said, Shane, if we're still on the phone after 10 minutes, hang up on me, okay? <laughs> it's the shortest production meeting of all time. Look, these guys are tired. They, they have to do the media. They have to run their own meetings. The last thing you want to do is waste time talking to me and Eli. Short and sweet, 10 minutes get right to the point, get some information, and let's go play on Monday night. You had to do a lot of those meetings throughout your career, obviously. Yes. Everybody wanted to talk to you. It sounds like you would wish that this would be instituted a long time ago, the 10-minute rule. But what are those meetings? How easy – like, what are you – because I assume you're trying to give some information so that when you guys do something, they know. That's a massive part of it. But then you can't give right. anything away. Is there a trust barrier there? How, how does that normally go from your eyes whenever you're talking to commentators and everything like that? Yeah, no, there's certainly a trust barrier. Look, obviously, the networks that are covering the NFL, I mean, that is the number one, you know, rule, right? What what is said in those production meetings has to stay there. I remember telling Phil Sims one time in a production meeting that we were going to move Jeff Saturday to guard so we could block Trevor Price, right? And you know, 
uh, I mean, that information went nowhere, right? Because you trust Phil Sims, you trust CBS, right? It's nice for him to know, hey, why is Saturday playing right guard, right? You let him know that. So <laughs> guys that have been doing it for a long time, you trust them. You know, that that's the pride of the networks covering the game. So, yeah, sure, you want to be helpful. You don't want to tell them that the first play is going to be a double reverse throwback to the quarterback. They don't have to know that. But you certainly want to be helpful to them because they're trying to do a good job and cover the game and, you know, make you look good as well, I think. Yeah, none of the coaches want to end up on the wrong side of the – Yeah. I'm going to want to – Get one here. <laughs> I'm going to want to – You know, I want to get one here. <laughs> Might be time to get one. <laughs> Maybe you want to get one here. You should probably get one. <laughs> Nobody wants to be on the side of that. So I assume they're telling you a lot of stuff like, hey, if we do this, please don't murder us. Yeah. Okay, here's the reason why. Here's what we're trying to do. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> we're trying to be on the positive, right? We're trying to celebrate <laughs> the great play from the defensive back as opposed to the poor throw of course. Uh, from the quarterback. But, uh, yeah, the timeouts, that seems to be the one place – it just kind of gets me, Pat. It just takes me to a darker place. So I'm working on it. I'm working on being more in control over a lack of uh, timeout. Yeah, that's very mature of you. Let's talk about some game management stuff. We were just chatting about this with uh, Riverboat Ron Rivera. I don't know if you saw the end of the game because you got everything going on preparing for tonight. Sam Howe proves he's a guy. I mean, just walks right down the field against an incredible Eagles defense. And then there's no time left on the clock, pretty much. You got two yards to win this thing and steal the win. And Ron Rivera said he thought his team was gassed or whatever. In that situation, I assume you're doing one of these to the kicking team, right? And saying, yeah, thank you, Ron. And thank you, Joey Sly. We got this from here. But how do you have that combo if you're Sam Howe with, like, not only the you're the quarterback CEO of a company, but also probably the right decision how you want your team to be. How do you balance that? And what do you think Ron Rivera was thinking there? Well, look, I mean, Ron Rivera has proven his track record of being an aggressive guy, right, throughout his whole career. So when he says that, I think you got to believe that he, he felt the pulse of the team, that they were gassed and, you know, might, might, might not be able to execute that play. I mean, to me, that was always something – that we tried to kind of have the conversation before we went onto the field, right? You know, talking to Tony Dungy, you know, you know, uh, he would tell me, hey, let's go down and score and we're going for two, right? So you knew that. So you might, you know, you know, save that two point play, hopefully that you didn't use to score the touchdown, right? So the coordinator knew you were all on the same page, right? So, uh, but look, I mean, Ron knows how his, his team is feeling. Uh, it's easy after the fact when, when Philly scores to, to or kicks the field goal to win it to say they should have gone for two. Yeah, certainly, I think for Sam, he's probably not quite ready to have that conversation to tell the head coach, hey, coach, <laughs> take your extra point team and, and stick it. I'm going for two, right? You know, Aaron Rodgers, you know, does do that probably. Tom Brady and the guys that have played a long time. So I'm a Sam Howell fan. I like the way he's playing. I think he'll earn that trust eventually. So, but look, Ron's on the sideline. Benjamin's on the sideline. They know the pulse. That was the right call for them at the time. You know, it didn't work out, but, uh, you know, it's hard to second guess, I think, in that situation. Well, actually, it's easy to second guess. Yeah. But I'm going to I'm gonna stick with uh, I'm gonna stick with Ron on that one. For us, it's very easy to second guess, yeah. The easiest <laughs> job in the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, this guy stinks. Oh, call. Go ahead, AJ. Peyton, I wanted to, to pivot. I know tonight in the Manning cast you have Will Farrow, and it got me thinking of when you hosted SNL, and I, I've said for years, you're the, the greatest athlete to ever host SNL to where – it, the whole thing was legit funny. I still remember you firing balls off those little kids on a United Way <laughs> fake commercial, whatever it was. What was that whole week like? I know that's supposed to be like a super like, grinding week, tons of hours every single day. Was that a lot for you? It's actually a lot like a football game week, uh, AJ. I have to admit, they bring you in on Monday. They, they're they just coming off you know their performance on Saturday, right? They're kind of moving a little slow. They've had late Saturday nights. They kind of you know, ask how far you're willing to go, what you're willing to do. Once they know that, they write Monday and Tuesday, right? They put the game plan in. Wednesday, you sit around a room, you read through these skits. If McAfee, the cameraman in the back, laughs really hard at one, they go, wow, McAfee thought it was funny, that skit's staying in. If you hear crickets and nobody laughs, they throw it out, right? So you're trying these different plays that one works. That one didn't work. <laughs> Thursday and Friday is dress rehearsal day. 
right? That's when you're putting your red zone in, you're putting your third down in, and then Saturday. I will say the one advantage you have, AJ, there's a dress rehearsal from 8.30 to 10.30, right? It's in front of a live audience. God, I wish I could have played some games with a dress rehearsal, you know, before we played the Patriots. Let's do a little rehearsal here to see if we're going to block McGinnis, to see if I, Ty Law is going to cover our receivers. You don't get that in football. And then 11.30 you know, Eastern time, it is a live show, right? And so, but you see some of the actors whose skits didn't make the cut. They're a little hurt, right? That's that receiver who's not going to get a lot of targets in this game, right? Uh, after the game, th- there's some pouting going on. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't as involved as I thought I would be. Lauren Michaels cut that skit out last minute, so I totally could relate. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I had like the most incredible cast, like just you know bringing me along the way. You know, in football. I mean, you don't get to have like a 12th guy in the huddle, right? You don't get to have a shadow for the day. But, I mean, I was behind the ropes with Sudeikis, Polar, Bill Hader, Will Forte, right? All-star cast. And so, anyway, that's my takeaway from the week. Hey, any skits not make it in that you wish did? I did an Elvis impersonator (laughs) skit. 70s heavy set Elvis Kristen Wiig and Polar are on a double date with Sudeikis and Bill Hader. The guys are like, this is going to suck. The girls are like, no, this guy is really good. All of a sudden, I come out. I, I, I go right to the guys. I'm serenading them, and I flip them. I flip them right away. Next thing you know, they're throwing their underwear at me. They're throwing their room keys at me. The girls are like, he sucks. He's terrible. And for some reason... Lauren Michaels said it's not making the cut. And, like, who am I? I'm Sam Howell right there, Pat. Who am I <laughs> to tell Lauren Michaels th- this is wrong? This is a great skit. They gave me the copy, though, Pat. I have the copy. I'll Ooh. show it to you one day. Ooh. I thought it should have made the final cut. Oh, you should release that stat. Ooh, yeah. I mean, Omaha should be putting that together as the lost scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait for that. <laughs> uh, last question. We know you got to go here from d Butt. Yeah, speaking of Will Ferrell, before you get up out of here, favorite Will Ferrell movie, and now Ooh. that the uh, writer's strike is almost over, any chance we see you on the big screen now, host football? God, I, I hope not, D. Uh, <laughs> I, I, um, I'm on there too much. Uh, I'm good at reading lines on a teleprompter and a commercial. By no means do I need to be in a movie. Uh, <laughs> Ali, Will Ferrell, I mean, you know, Wedding Crashers kind of just, just, just pops out, right? I mean, mm. Eli loves to say, Mom, I need the meatloaf. That'll probably come out tonight. Uh, you know, Ron Burgundy. I mean, I was interviewed by Ron Burgundy several years ago as, you know, he was hosting sports center. He interviewed me. I don't know how we got that done. You know, (laughs) Cooper, my brother kept telling me, just keep calling him Ron. Just keep saying Ron as many times as you can. Well, that's a good point there, Ron. And it was totally off the script. I just teed him up. So we're honored to have him tonight. We know he's a huge Pete Carroll fan. Uh, Should be entertaining. Hopefully the game's good, but uh, Will Ferrell should be fun tonight. So tune in to see what he has to say. He's coming on around the second quarter. I Are you to, friends I with everybody? Are you friends with every human on earth, you think, at this point? I, I don't think so. But like I said, I'm not afraid to cold call. <laughs> I, I do know Will Farrell a little bit. I have I have I have an email. I don't know if it's his official email, but I you know, I'm not afraid to throw it out there. There you go. There's me and Ron <laughs> right there. So uh anyway, you know, not not afraid to reach out, uh just like I'm sure you aren't try to get some guys to come on and Talk some football, right? I mean, football is a great unifier, Pat. People love football from different fields. That's kind of the fun thing Eli and I get to do is talk people from different backgrounds that the number one thing is they love football. How many guests tonight? Will and anybody else? We're shooting for three. Uh, We have two. Sean O'Hara, Eli's old center, is coming on, right? I mean, I don't know if I'll even be on at that point. The two of them have this bromance. Uh, So, you know, I'll just kind of sit back. Uh, had a little audible on our third guest. We had a guy committed, oh, no. uh, had to, had, had to call in Omaha. So oh. we're, we're sort of, uh, Apple, Apple. See. <laughs> yeah, Apple, 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 check, check. So <laughs> we're trying to see if, uh, we can replace that third guest. If not, we may just go with Farrell and O'Hara, which I know O'Hara's ego is just getting blown up right now to think that it's just Farrell and O'Hara in the same thing. <laughs> well, I think what you need to know, and I don't want to blow you and well, <laughs> 
Jeez, the phrasing voice. Mm. Yeah. Phrasing. No, no, we know. Yeah, phrasing. I don't want to. Keep wanna... talking. Fill, <laughs> keep fill it in, please. Fill it in. Well, you know, just, boys, everybody needs to relax. Okay. Anyways, I don't want to, you know, boost you and Eli's ego too much, but I think a lot of us as spectators, you know, we don't mind when there isn't a guest. Like, Will yes. will crush. Yep. O'Hara will crush. But even, I don't even, and I shouldn't be telling you this, you're much smarter than I am. But, like, you just reacting to a play, not even feeling obligated to talk, good. It is great. You guys have struck gold. We can't wait to watch tonight, and we appreciate the hell out of you. Pat, AJ, D, thanks for having me.